glimpse of the champion, Scott. But behind him comes disaster. Cutting the hairpin, Jackie Oliver crashes out of control into Jackie X. drivers who shared the winning glory at Le Mans last year incredibly survived the inferno. Flame-proof driving overalls probably saved them both. Jackie X, convalescing in Belgium, says he'll be racing again in a week or two. This is how Jackie Oliver remembers what happened. I got to my braking zone just behind Jochen Rint and uh, put the brakes on and went straight to the floor. And I noticed that the uh, inside front wheel was wobbling, almost a blur. Complete brake fade, no brakes at all, so I took to the side of the circuit and tried to cut the hairpin out completely and go straight across the hair, hairpin, missing the hairpin completely, and join the circuit the other side, passing about three cars in the process. But as soon as the car got off the circuit onto the rough, of course, I lost complete control of it. And unfortunately, Jackie X, unknown to him, was accelerating out of the hairpin, and I hit him straight in the side. With the cars on the first lap of got something like an Eurasians of 45 gallons each on board. That's 90 gallons of high octane fuel that explodes everywhere and it just needs the slightest spark to set it off. We have a internal fire extinguisher system on the car which I wasn't able to get to because the dashboard was crumpled badly. So I rolled myself on the grass until the flames were put out and uh, then collected my senses and then ran as quick as I could to the pits to warn Pedro Rodriguez, my teammate, um, so that they could bring in him to save a similar drama. But obviously, my sh uh, front suspension failure happened, so it was obvious it was going to happen to him sooner or later, so we brought the second car in. I believe it was line second, you know, which must have been a rather a shock to him. At the time, of course, you can't really appreciate what's happened to your teammate, and all you're thinking of is that you've been robbed of uh, a possible victory. Uh, but since he's cooled down and his maximum temperature has come back to normal, um, of course he realised that it was the best thing to do. Rodriguez had been fourth as the 14 survivors fought their way through the flames to keep the race going. Ahead of him, Stuart, Brabham and Hound, and behind, the order unchanged except for Eamon, who dropped back with clutch trunk. On lap six, McLaren led a bunch of back markers, followed by Rint, Surtees, Andretti, Servos Gavin, Hill and Stommelin. But back at the crash, firefighting crews had used water, which only spread the flames and wet the track before they finally resorted to foam. Bugatti hairpin became a nightmare. Even the best, like Brabham, suffered. Yet, despite lost seconds, no one was near enough to take the Australian's third place from him. And soon, with Halm in trouble, Brabham would move up to number two. Next to succumb was Henri Pescarola. For a time, he was fourth, but slipped to fifth behind his teammate, Beltoise. It looked as though the French cars would have to be reckoned with if only they could finish the 90 laps. On lap nine, Rint was out with spark box trouble. Halm retired next lap with a broken distributor, and Eamon gave up with clutch and engine problems. Lap 13, McLaren driving steadily keeps ahead of 